Hello, in the next 10 minutes, I'm going to talk about the development of teaching at UCL around citizen science, in particular on our postgraduate level module, Introduction to Citizen Science and Scientific Crowdsourcing. But to start with, I will give a bit of a background, how we got into the position of starting with teaching citizen science. So my personal background is that I've been doing participatory action research for a very long time um, and worked together with postgraduate students, with uh, PhD students uh, over the years on different projects from working with communities around uh, issues of environmental information to uh, exploring crowdsourced geographical information and many other things. In all these cases, and I learned that in those areas you learn by doing. So you have to be involved and you have someone to guide you with the practices of it. It doesn't work to teach only from a specific book or from a lecture and then go out into the world. You actually want to engage with the process and that's something that I do also a lot in my research. I participate in a lot of citizen science projects, not just writing about them and studying them from the outside. And that provided an ability to combine theory and practice as a way to assist learners to understand concepts and practices. So I've done it in different cases. Here, just one example of it from a talk at an OpenStreetMap conference of pointing out that if you want to research OpenStreetMap, you better study it and be a mapper first in order to understand how it works. So in terms of the experience specifically in citizen science, um, I was starting to run different activities around citizen science, specifically beyond more uh, participatory mapping, around 2007-8. And that evolved into different requests to have seminars and talks about it. And around 2010, I was finding myself talking more and more about citizen science. And by 2011, there were requests to integrate talks about crowdsourcing and things like uh, OpenStreetMap, so crowdsourced geographical information, into a lecture. So that's just one lecture within a wider course. By 2013, I was giving a UCL open lecture, a public lecture on citizen science, as a result of different projects that we developed here at UCL. And by 2016, that was the beginning of the idea that we can have an MSc in citizen science to create people with the right skill for this area. But 2017, as a way towards this wider program, uh, I designed and started to deliver a year later a postgraduate module, Introduction to Citizen Science and Scientific Crowdsourcing, which we'll talk about. And later on, there was also the development of specific uh, training modules within the EU Citizen Science pro for platform and all sorts of other informal teaching of MSc and PhD students. And all that experience was integrated into what you're seeing. So where it is coming from and why I've got into teaching citizen science. So where I'm coming from is that I'm working within a practice that we call here extreme citizen science, which is highly engaged and participatory. But in order to explain to people what is extreme citizen science, which is at the extremities of the practice of citizen science, you need to explain, first of all, what it is citizen science. So you can't assume that people know about it. And actually, most of the audience never heard about citizen science and what it is. Even when people heard about citizen science, it's very likely that they have a very specific disciplinary or a very partial understanding of what the whole practice involves. So what are the learning objectives? 
in terms of teaching is, is to explain that citizen science is a very complex socio-technical object that need to be learned. So there is uh, issues with software, with uh, information communication technology infrastructure, with data quality, with volunteer management, with recruitment and engagement, and with all sorts of other issues. And therefore, if we want to teach someone about it, and especially taking into account that they never heard about it, we want them to understand and to participate so they can think like a volunteer or like a participant. So that's where the uh, design came from. And that's, for example, demonstrated in an ongoing process. And those are just some of the slides that I've been using in trying to explain what it is this extreme citizen science. So say, after I've explained where normal citizen science is, I'm explaining where is the extreme citizen science. You can see the first presentation of it in 2010, a presentation from 2011 that was too much highlighting a form of a ladder of a hierarchy, which is, wasn't the intention of it, and then developing it in different ways, also explaining what the geographical citizen science is. So out of all that, an iteration of uh, explanation evolved different ways, which I noticed during presentations work well. For example, an overview of the field of citizen science in such a way that both integrate the narrative, the historical narrative, the technological narrative, and also the participatory narrative into one way where we can go through the different types of citizen science and not just tell people about the types of citizen science, but also give them examples of each activity. Another example is the narrative that goes around the development of higher levels of education over the year and the changes in, in science and in public participation in science over the years. So that led to the development of the introduction of citizen science and scientific crowdsourcing at UCL. It was suggested uh, in 2017, as I mentioned, and started in January 2018. It's a full-scale MSc level course. It's designed around 10 weeks with two hours of lecture and seminars, but one hour practical and two assignments that um, of about 1,500 words each. Um, one of the ideas that was important for the course was to make sure that it's an open course, though it's available on UCL Extend, the open learning website of UCL, so anyone can access it. And it's suitable for online learning or class-based or a mix between it, which came as a good blessing during the pandemic especially. And it's a demonstration of the different interest in citizen science. The cost structure is actually, interestingly, um, what I learned over those lectures is that uh, we do it upside down. We don't start from the theory and then going into the practice because people don't have yet a concept of what it is that citizen science includes. So we start with a lot of demonstration and hands-on experience so the student can start building up the understanding of what is citizen science, and then we can build up the understanding. It was also important to make it cross-disciplinary. So it's to provide general introductions so anyone from any uh, faculty at UCL can join in and learn it. And that also reflects itself in the learning objective that you see here. So the general structure of the course is that it starts with some background of history, typologies, explaining what crowdsourcing is and what environmental citizen science is. That's the first part, which provides you with a lot of introduction. And as I said, each week the students are doing something like using online citizen science and more complex a technical citizen science uh, to do it as, an, as a way to learn. The second part is dealing with what I lots of time call the data quality monster, the claims about the quality of citizen science, where it comes from, uh, data management, uh, digital technology design, and volunteer management. So that's actually organizing and running citizen science, so people can understand that. 
The third part is dealing with ethics, policy, and evaluation, and getting now into the philosophy of science and social theory to explain where citizen science sits in society. And finally, there is also the elements of uh, participating in different activities, from starting with clicking on Penguin in Zooniverse to ending up with a full app design. And the assignment is both technical on technology design and then on the theory and the practice. The class structure is always start with a prep video where students can watch it online before the class. There is always some reading where we split it into core reading that they have to read in order to prepare to the class. Uh, additional reading, which is something that they are expected to use in the assignment and a deep dive, which if someone is very interested in it. The lectures themselves online are broken into three or six parts, so they can uh, be watched like this lecture. And there are quizzes and other reflection questions in each unit. And the text and the slides are available online, so students can use them. And I've used a, diff a slightly different uh, version uh, in class to talk different points. The uh, lessons from it was that actually it is surprising that already in this field it's really difficult to figure out what you select just for uh, 30 contact hours. You need to think through uh, because the field is already big and complex and that was somewhat a surprise. I thought that it might be challenging to think about the topic but it's actually was very easy. The creating of the reading list is also challenging because practically you are creating the classics of citizen science. There, in practice, there was only a marginal flipped element where the students are expected to watch things online and then discuss in class. For some reason, it didn't work well, but the hands-on experience worked really well. And Another lesson is that creating the course both as open and available uh, in class is a lot of work and it requires about three or four times more work than just class delivery in standard lecture. There is much higher standard in material preparation, which show itself when uh, the whole university shifted into online, as you will see it in a minute. And uh, the recording of talks also uh, is a complex task that need to be thought about to keep it engaging. And it turned out to be very helpful because there were all kinds of incidents. So every year that the course has run, there was an element of using it online. So if you want to find more information, you can search for UCL Extend or New Citizen Science or the UCL MSc in Citizen Science. So thank you very much for uh, watching this and I hope that you learned something about the journey of teaching citizen science at UCL.